Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Tyraku here, and today we're going to be talking about the wish list. Now, first things first, I hope they increase the chances on this wish list because boosting it by 2x isn't that much. Now, before we get into it, I want to know what are your guys' approach as far as filling out your champions for your wish list? I'm not saying this is the best way, the only way, because depending on where you're at in the game, it's going to greatly determine how you actually fill this thing out. So I'm going to be sharing my ideas, my thoughts, and then hopefully helping you guys actually fill yours out as well. So first things first, you'll notice that I only have one rare. That's Cold Heart. Now, the reason for that is because while there is two other spots, if I put, say, a Painkeeper, which is a champion I use pretty regularly, and then I threw in a Renegade, which is really the only other rare that I use, then it's kind of, at least the way I'm thinking about it, and it could be wrong, but it's kind of boosting the, ch the chances to get other good rare champions, but more importantly, it's reducing my chance of getting a Cold Heart, which is the only champion I really care to awaken because Renegade, she's perfectly fine as far as her stats go. I don't use her in any like, content where she needs to have any blessing effects that I know of. Um, Painkeeper is in my clan boss team. I'm not going to change her if I get an awakening shard for her. I may even sell it. I use her, but I don't need her to be changed. Cold Heart, she can always benefit from some changes. So if I come in here just real quick, check out some of the blessings, then let's see. So we can only get rare ones. So if you have a rare champion, you can only get rare blessings for them. But let's just check out the stat boosts, which is very important. So HP there, not really needed for Cold Heart. We have HP. Well, it is needed if you want her to survive. I just want to want to kill the enemy, okay? So HP, uh, we have, is it HP on all of them? We have HP and attack. Maybe I missed the attack. So HP and attack, attack could be nice. Crit damage is going to be ideal. So 15% extra crit damage on Cold Heart. That's going to be very nice. This is actually the blessing that I will put on Cold Heart. Phantom Touch seems perfect for her. But let's scroll through here. This one could even be good as well. 15% crit damage and increases the damage inflicted to bosses. So Hero Soul could be a very good one for Cold Heart. Phantom Touch could be a very good one for Cold Heart. Faultless Defense doesn't really seem to fit Cold Heart. Let's see this. It actually may have accuracy as well. If it has accuracy as well, that would be definitely ideal because Cold Heart needs accuracy, speed, crit damage. Um, you know, you know our typical stats, typical build. And then here we have HP, we have HP, so some crit damage, but we don't really need turn meter fill. So with Cold Heart, I know Phantom's Touch and Hero Soul. Those are the two ones I'm kind of looking for. So if I get that, that's how I'm gonna build her. That's what I've done to decide all the champions that I have in my wish list currently and i definitely recommend you guys do the same thing so don't necessarily go in here and pick the champions you use the most because the champions you use the most may not actually be one any reason to actually put them in here say you're a newer account okay say you have three legendaries for example you have basilius ronus or some other some other useless legendary more or less you have two useless legendaries and then you have ninja okay just for example sake well ninja is the only one you really want to awaken so only put him there. You don't want a double chance to get a legendary you don't want, right? So don't fill it out just because you use the champion, you use it some. Be mindful about how you fill it out. So my approach for the legendary specifically was a little bit different than my approach for the epics. So with Krisk, the reason why he's in there, what I did, I didn't approach it as what champions do I use the most. I more so approached it as I want to bring this blessing into a team. What champion would make sense? So for me, Brimstone is an amazing blessing, okay? What it does is the meteorite that's applied by this debuff, it can only be applied to one enemy at a time. But if you have a champion doing an AoE ability, assuming you're not 100% six star fully awakened, then it's gonna give you a better chance if you're doing AoE abilities of actually keeping this debuff up. But basically what happens, the meteorite inflicts damage equal to 25% of the affected champion's max HP. It'll also inflict damage to all other enemies by five, by 5% 5 of their HP, okay? So this ability right here is gonna be amazing for Hydra. It's gonna be good for Iron Fortress. It's gonna be, or Iron Twins. It'll be good for any content like that. Mainly for me, it's Hydra and Iron Twins. So I was thinking, okay, Brimstone. This I want this ability. It gives me HP, gives me some accuracy, and it gives me some speed. What champion benefits from HP, accuracy, and speed? And I wanna use that champion. I could use them in Iron Twins and Hydra. I was thinking Nekmothar, definitely a decent option. Not for sure if I want to use him in Iron Twins. He's a pretty good champion. If I can get more benefit, more uses from the champion, it's going to be better. So they can go from the two areas and then beyond, it's going to be ideal. So maybe Faction Wars, uh, maybe even Arena, that'd be ideal situation. So as many areas as possible, but specifically for Iron Twins and Hydra. Nekmo, he was definitely an option. 
I was like, okay, I wonder if there's any better option than Necmo. Necmo is definitely a very solid potential option for Brimstone, especially if you don't have Krisk. My idea with Krisk, though, is okay, he's bringing in Provoke. He brings a decreased speed for the um, Iron Twins. He brings Buff Extends. He has two AoE abilities. So this seems like the perfect blessing to have on Krisk. So I'm going to put Krisk in my wish list. Whereas I don't really use Krisk that often right now, but if I get him and I have Brimstone on him, I'm definitely going to throw him in those areas and use him a ton. I already use him, like I said, a little bit in Hydra. I don't really have him in Hydra as much as I would like. Iron Twins, I don't actually use him, but I will use him if he has that blessing. Plus, he's going to bring a decreased speed, big shield, everything. It's going to be a very good overall setup, I believe. Now, the next champion, to be honest, Ray. the only reason why I actually picked her is because she's my only plus four champion in my account. I don't think it's a bad idea to throw your nuker in there, whether it's an epic champion or a legendary, whatever it is. But I threw Ray in there. I'm like, you know what? She already has the highest stats in my account because of her empowerment. Dark Elves faction for me is pretty good as well. So I'm like, you know, I got to go ahead and put her in there. If I get her fully awakened, that would be crazy. One of the stronger Rays in the game for sure. If she's awakened, if she's fully empowered, if she's fully awakened and my faction gardens are filled out, then that's going to be pretty solid, right? I've been using her in the arena as well. Now, as far as her um, blessing I'd get, it's probably going to be Soul Reap. Definitely willing to test this out and check it out. But this adds crit damage, speed, attack, HP. Everything's perfect for Ray. So that's definitely what I would do for her. Now, next champion is Kaimar. Now, the approach with Kaimar is more so the idea, okay, I want a champion who can utilize the ability right here. So the blessings, this ability... Do, 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 um, temporal, temporal chains, okay? Decreases each enemy's speed for each active buff they are under. So I'm thinking, okay, this is going to be ideal against champions who, well, if they're going first, right? So my Kaimar currently is in a go second team. So if the enemy's going first, they're placing their buffs. It's going to reduce their speed by 2% for the first level and then up to instantly decreases the turn meter of all enemies by 15% whenever an enemy receives a third active buff. Oh, it's so going to decrease it by 3%. Wait, no, 5% for each active buff, and then decrease it by 15% when they receive a third buff. So against uh, Siffies, against Duchesses, it's going to be a lot of turn meter decrease. So I'm like, okay, that's going to be good for Kaimar. He's going to go second team as it is anyways, so that works out pretty well. And then another benefit, I could have definitely threw this on a Duchess. I could have thrown it on um, Rhodos. I could have thrown it on any champion who's in a go second type team. I could have thrown it on Kandrophon. But looking at this, okay, Accuracy... We have speed. We have HP and defense. This is amazing for Kaimar. The speed is amazing for Kaimar. So I'm like, okay, well, Temporal Chains is going to be good for a go second team. Works out perfectly for my Kaimar. And even if I had him in a fast team, it would allow me to go against enemy, say, if they had a fast Kaimar Siffy. I could bring my fast Kaimar Siffy and possibly cut in on them. So I was thinking that Temporal Chains would be amazing on Kaimar. So I added him to my wish list. So you guys can maybe get a little bit of an idea. More so, instead of taking the champions that I use the most and putting them in the wish list, I was looking for the blessings that I most want to use, thinking about which champions would synergize best with them, which areas I could use, and then throwing that champion in there. Basically, if you guys can use a champion in more areas, if the blessing fits well, then hey, that's a perfect champion to wish list in my opinion. There's going to be a ton of um, opinions on this, a ton of suggestions, a ton of advice. Just pick one and go with it. If you don't have a ton of legendaries, pick one from there. Or if you don't want both of them, just pick one. It doesn't really matter. And then as far as the epics, these three epic champions I use a lot in PvE content. Geomancer honestly could probably just be left in here by himself because he's absolutely amazing. But both of these I would be very happy with actually getting boosted. I considered throwing Madam Saris in there because that 40 extra accuracy would be very nice. And I may actually do that. Honestly, I may just throw her in there instead of Royal Guard. But I do use Royal Guard a little bit. Um, and the extra accuracy on him would be very nice as well. Husk, he may not actually need the extra accuracy. Madam Saris, though, where, let, let me think about this, okay? Let's decide. Do I want to put Madam Saris in there instead? So when you come in here to the blessings, what blessings would Madam Saris work best with? And would it be worth it actually switching her? So Cruelty, not really. Lethal Dose, no, not really. Commanding Presence, possibly. Chainbreaker, maybe, but for the arena, doesn't really make a ton of sense. Because if she's locked down then the team's going to fall apart anyways because her doing decreased defense and decreased attack and stripping the enemy is not going to do much by itself. Crushing Rend, not going to be useful for Madam and then Incinerate, also not useful for Madam Saris. So we have Light up here. Iron Will could possibly be, but I think this is very niche. Heavencast, 
not really going to be useful. So as far as the skills by themselves, I don't really see anything that's going to be super useful other than commanding presence. Commanding presence gives HP and resist, HP, speed, not really what I'm looking for either. We do have some that give accuracy, obviously, but let's see the other ones, okay? And these two, I don't think it's going to really work for Madam. Dark Resolve, kind of niche as well. Phantom Touch, not for Madam Saris's build. This champion received less damage from each subsequent hit from subsequent hit from multi-hit skills. The damage reduction increases with every additional hit. No accuracy there. This could be decent. No, not really because it would make her uh, her speed tune out of whack with the rest of the team. Honestly, I think this would be the best one for Madam Saris, but it doesn't give accuracy. It doesn't give me a big enough benefit to actually make it worth it. So I would probably just end up taking Chainbreaker for the extra accuracy. So this is what it's going to be with a lot for a lot of champions, okay? If you can get a champion who perfectly matches a blessing, that's what I like to put in the wish list. For me, I'm looking through here and not really seeing anything that's like, yes, that's what Madam Saris should be wearing. Chainbreaker gives accuracy. Let's see what other one does. We have accuracy from there. No accuracy. And no accuracy. No accuracy. We have accuracy here, but this is only for HP burn. So doesn't really seem to be useful for Madam. This is um, decrease in defense, no accuracy. So it looks like Chainbreaker and Lethal Dose are the only two that would give her accuracy. But this does poisons and she's not using poisons. So really Chainbreaker for the accuracy would be the best or Commanding Presence for the actual benefit of the skill. So those two are the ones that I would go. So maybe this gave you guys a little bit of an idea of my thought process behind the Altar of Souls. Hopefully that came across well. These are the champions I have locked in. This is what I'm liking so far. Ruler Guard, Husk, and Geo. I think all will benefit some way from all of these things, especially from, if nothing else, just the ones that increase increased damage. Damage dealers are a pretty safe bet. Geomancer, I think it's gonna be pretty solid with commanding presence, boosting the aura. Honestly, Geo may not even need to be there. I mean, he's an amazing champion. I want to survive more, but maybe he doesn't bring anything. Um, increase the damage inflicted by HP burn. Do you plus by this champion in the arena? I really wish it wasn't in the arena. If it wasn't in the arena, it may be fine. Now, maybe he could do survival instincts. So maybe there's some other options for Geo. Um, but yeah, this is my idea. Obviously, very early iteration, very day one of this entire system. So all the opinions could be adjusted down the road. But I want to give you guys maybe this little bit different approach to the Altar of Souls and let you guys know you don't have to completely fill this out. You can hold some people back because each champion you put in here is in a way lowering your chance of getting one of the others. I do like my legendary picks though. I think this is pretty solid. I did have Duchess in there because I was going to put her in there for the Brimstone because I do use her in different areas. But with Duchess, I think I want to use her. I don't know. Duchess and Chris. Duchess is definitely vying for a spot here, but I'm not for sure if I'm going to put her. So guys, let me know what you all think. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Maybe it was a long breakdown, but either way, thank you all very much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.